verse 251. The world is born of causation. When it is regarded as removed from discrimination and as resembling Maya, a dream, etc., one is emancipated. I spoke in the previous video about what we do when we wake up from a dream. There's actually quite a mental effort involved as we reorient ourselves, as we establish that what we've just been experiencing is a dream and that what we're now experiencing, wakefulness, is real. There's quite an effort that goes on. So for example, we have to remind ourselves that all the things and the people we encountered in that dream weren't real. They weren't actually individual people. They weren't actually individual objects. They had no independent selfhood. All the things which we regarded as solid we now no longer regard as solid and we take away space when we label something as dream we don't think that was a big dream it took up a lot of space or that was a smaller dream it didn't need so much space we just take away the space that's it there's no space involved it all happened in a little point of our consciousness somewhere, of our sleeping consciousness, of our dream consciousness. And we take away time. We take away memories. It might be we lived a whole lifetime in that dream. We might have grown up from being a child living with our family to being an old person on our deathbed. A whole lifetime but we take all that away as well it all happened perhaps in a very short time a few minutes or perhaps even in an instant there's some argument for saying that dreams actually happen in an instant and in this verse verse 251 causation is mentioned and this of course relates to time as well but more specifically, it, it relates to the feeling that all of this has always been here in one form or another. This is the assumption that we make. We make this assumption in a dream as well. That these people that we're talking to, they've got a history. This park I'm walking through has been carefully tended and looked after has been carefully tended and developed over the years. It's just causation. Causation is the idea that what we have now is a product of what has arisen before. In contrast to this, when we wake up, we realize that it was all just created at that moment for the purposes of the dream. This lovely lawn in the park has not been watered, fed and mown. It's arisen just like that. This is what we do when we wake up from a dream, isn't it? It's what we must do, otherwise we believe the dream was somehow real. And this is what we do in enlightenment practice. This is what the previous verses were describing and also this verse. The world is born of causation when it is regarded as removed from discrimination and as resembling maya, a dream, etc. One is emancipated. So when it is regarded as removed from discrimination, slightly clumsy wording here, this is what the spiritual practitioner does. The spiritual practitioner removes these discriminating factors of time, space, 
individual forms, causation, solidity. These are the aspects of discrimination. How do we remove them? Well, we step aside, we step back from them. And this is difficult if you've not found that place that you can step back to. But perhaps by contemplating what, what's being said here about these discriminating factors, you might have some kind of clue. Because we're talking about coming back to self-nature, to suchness, or perhaps more accessibly, a sense of being. Have you got a sense of being, a sense of your own being, a sense of something that is apparently looking out onto the world rather than being in the world? This is something to give more attention to if you have. Because you might find that all of what's being said here begins to make sense. We've got a habit of devaluing this sense of being and this process of discrimination which builds up conventional reality tends to siphon off that sense of being. There's a big emphasis put on out there. And as enlightenment practitioners, we don't buy into that at all. We see it as a construction, like a dream. Maya. Maya means delusion. But it also means our tendency to buy into that delusion. When you're in a dream and you have some idea that it is a dream, it's very hard to accept. Logically, you might know it's a dream, but emotionally, it's, it's, it's also real, isn't it? It's also real. It's only when you wake up that you divest it of its reality. Within the dream, there's a powerful prejudice to believe in its reality. This is the power of Maya. And even when you've had an enlightenment event in your life, there's a tendency to want to dismiss it. To diminish it. To diminish this sense of being to diminish suchness, to diminish spiritual teachings, because this is all so real, it's so demanding, there's things we've got to get on with. But you can get on with these things without buying into them. And you do this by realizing and constantly reminding yourself of the nature of Maya, of the nature of dream. And this includes the pattern of your own moods, your own moods and tendencies are part of this dream. This is described in verse 252, varieties of habit energy that's our moods, growing out of error, are united with the mind. They are perceived by the ignorant as objects externally existence, and the essence of mind is not perceived. So, moods are these varieties of habit energy. It's not just a certain way of thinking. It's the emotion that we put into that way of thinking 
we see the world in terms of our moods. Somebody reminded me recently of something that I've said, something that I told them. I said, if you're not enlightened, you're in a mood. And I was actually quite struck by this, because I thought, is that right? If you're not enlightened, now you're in, you're in a mood. And I thought, yeah, this is quite a useful teaching, because it seems to be the case. There's always some mood going on, otherwise you are enlightened. The mood might be not necessarily a bad mood, it might be a fairly neutral mood or even a good mood. You've got to watch out for the good moods. These are the ones that you feel entirely justified in going with. But this is what we put our mind into. We put our mind into these moods, we identify with these moods. We go with them. We take our perception based on these moods as reality. This means objects externally existing. We are intent on believing in the reality of the dream. And when we do this, the essence of mind is not perceived. And this essence is awareness, pure awareness, everyday awareness, the awareness that's operating right now. Verse 253 tells us, the essence of mind is pure, but not the mind that is born of error. Error rises from error, therefore mind is not perceived. And this is mind with a capital M. So, there's a mind that is the embodiment of our moods, of our habit energy. And there's mind which is awareness, suchness, sense of being. The Enlightenment practitioner is waking up from the small mind, the mind of the dreamer, to the essence of mind, awareness itself. <laughs>